You are watching T Radio V, Radio in TV. Hey, welcome to the post show broadcasting live from T Radio V in Hollywood, California. Okay, this is where you know where we elevate the creative cult culture. <laughs> this is where um, the creatives can be seen. So thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching us. I'm Poe. You know I'm Poe. Okay, Saturday. Is this my right one? Yes. Saturday, March 12th from 4 to 7 p.m., a photographic exhibit. Opening reception and reading by Holiday Mason at Beyond Baroque Literary Arts Center. 681 North Venice Boulevard, Venice, California. A photographic exploration. Selected images from the Mud Urn Altar and Fairy Tale series. A nude study of human beings dreaming of death, sex, and other realms. What else is there besides, never mind. Okay, 5 p.m. Poetry reading in the Black Room. Holiday Mason, which is... She's so awesome. Um, Marcia Delao, and I might be there. I'm going to try to make it. And Gail Rongsky read together for the first time, offering up a kaleidoscope of intense imaginal, which I'm not sure if it, that's a word, but that's what it said, imaginal. I like it, though. <laughs> because as creatives, we can make up whatever words we want to make up. Um, but it was all highlighted in red when I tried to write it. So <laughs> red flags went up. Surreal. Lyric poetry that leaps with the colors found in many worlds within many worlds. Now, poets don't always follow the, wor the, the rules, and I love that about them. Actually, creatives in general do not follow the rules. Okay, that goes there. On Thursday, March 17th at 10 p.m., St. Cassidy's Day, with the Junkyard Gospel and One Man Banjo at the Scotland Yard Pub. But this is in Canoga Park. <laughs> this isn't in Scotland. <laughs> Fooled you. 22041 Sherman Way. The Junkyard Gospel returns to Scotland Yard on one of the drinkingest. It's not my word. It's just what it said. And of course, it's not a word, but everybody knows what drinkingest means. It's the drinkingest night of the year to rock your intoxicated faces off. And no, I didn't come up with that. I wish I had. It's especially a special occasion since the last time they played a show was this very date one year ago. That's a lot of pent up musical madness to unleash. And you definitely want to be in the crossfire as they play two full sets to close the damn bar down. These are not my words, because I wouldn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> and I feel kind of funny saying, I feel like I should have like, I don't know, a kilt on. Okay, anyway, the opening, opening the night to One Man Banjo all the way from Oakland, California, kicking the night off Irish and proper. Okay, so with this episode, we are discussing connecting with our world and each other, expanding human consciousness and creating a vision of human unity. Amen. All through visual artistic expression and its increasing value, contribution, awareness, and impact on some vitally important issues. In the studio with me today, I have some amazing individuals. One is missing. I'll get to her at the end. Okay, but please welcome a sculptor, painter, beautifully balancing realism and expressionism, contrasting steel rods with nature, dramatic sky with a darkening atmosphere, and transforming weapons into symbols of peace, Victor Hugo Zayas. Great. Yay! <laughs> great to be here. It's great to have you. I'm mm -hmm. super excited about this man being here. Mm -hmm. Okay, 
I'll, I'll go ahead and introduce Courtney Carter, but Courtney Carter's not here. But she's an art promoter, writer, passionate about helping emerging artists become established while elevating all of humanity via art. What a beautiful, beautiful person. She's a regular on the Po Show. She will be on again. She has brought me, actually, these two other wonderful people that I'm going to introduce. Um, she couldn't be here today. She had to call me at the last minute because she has other obligations that the rain was supposed to make go away, and it didn't. Okay, so we have two of her artists, very talented and inspiring artists, I must say. An artist combining a graphic urban aesthetic with environmental and existential themes. Kaylin Blake. Did I say it right? Kaylin. You did, yeah. Kaylin. Talk into the mic. I'm going to have to whip you. Hi. Okay. <laughs> and one who, through his work, thrives to create a vision of human unity, a.k.a. humanity, returning guest, Johnny Terajosu. Hello. Yeah, I'm so glad you're back. You're going to talk I'm a lot more this glad. time, right? Of course, yes. See, look at that smile. Doesn't he have the greatest smile on the planet? Oh, my gosh. Thank you. <laughs> right? Look at that. <laughs> It's ridiculous. It's super ridiculous. Okay. So what were we going to talk about? What were, what were we here for? Okay. So <coughs> where should we start with this, Mr. Mr. Victor, <laughs> Victor Hugo? You tell me. Okay. <laughs> let's talk about, um, you know what, let's start with um, your TED Talk because that's how first thing I said to you probably before, well, after I hugged you mm -hmm. and uh, molested you in the, um, in the <laughs> outer rooms. Um, I had just watched a TED Talk that he did in 2012 at the Art Center College of Design, and most people know that I'm a te TED Talk fiend. That's like my preferred um, entertainment in life. Um, so he talked, <coughs> for one thing, of kids. This is what he says. This is the first tear that I, that I shed, because he talks my talk. If you introduce creativity at an early age, you wake up their curiosity for life. Okay, so elaborate on that. <coughs> well, <coughs> you know, I, I, um, I remember I had a, a hundred students, and uh, wow. they, they're all kids, you know, and it was the most amazing thing because uh, um, this class, uh, it was a workshop that I taught in South Central for kids that didn't have the means. So... It was a program to the Irvine Foundation and Art Center. And I basically just um, volunteered my time to do it because uh, I've been exposed to creativity at an early age. How did that, can you elaborate on that? How was that? I don't think I stalked that part of you. <laughs> um, how, was, how were you introduced to it? Well, <coughs> I was born in Mexico. Yes. And my, Mazatlan. my dad, I remember uh, listening to Beethoven when I was three. Beautiful. I mean, I remember since I was a kid, I would hear this beautiful classical music. So I guess it happened right at the beginning. But I think <coughs> in going to school uh, here in the States, I remember uh, being exposed to creativity through art classes. And uh, I remember at a very early age, I always... Uh, it was such an amazing thing for me. You know, you don't realize it when you've been exposed, of course, because you're a kid. Mm, yeah. But as time goes by, you realize that you've been fortunate enough to be exposed to that. And I think that um, <coughs> my job at the workshop really was just really to, to uh, explore creativity and to, to introduce creativity to these kids that really never been exposed to creativity. Uh, and, uh, and all I did really is just open the door. And the interesting thing about it is like, uh, you know, they they give you credit for all the things you did, and you really didn't do much except you opened the door. You know what? Which, which that's the biggest thing is yeah, opening the, the door because otherwise they're not yeah. going to see what's and there. You know, but I, I tell you, some of these kids were just so incredible. I mean, they had to, you know, they had to take the bus for an hour, hour and a half, and they lived three miles from there. And it was because of the lack of. Uh, uh, ability to take a, a, a bus and it was just it was just amazing but you know these guys just persistently I mean they they were really young too they were uh, between uh, 12 and 17 and 17 to 24 and um, and the transformation was just incredible you know and I, I when you see that um, 
You know, I, I was given the opportunity to go to art school because uh, somebody I look up to, uh, he, uh, he gave me a scholarship and based on his friendship with another friend of his that passed away when he, when uh. he was young. And they gave one scholarship from San Diego to someone to go to art school, and it was me. You're and lucky I, man. I am lucky. And uh, at the same time, you know, you, you don't know when you're going to be called to do something like that. So I did that because I lost uh, some friends to violence. Oh, and okay. I, I and their names, which there was one of them was my teacher, art teacher. And uh, and then you, 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 you give back. You know, you do the same thing. You, I, I, I taught this workshop and... You know what? That's amazing. actually a really great segue because I have a video, um, Victor Hugo, guns, guys. So let's take a look at that real, real quick. I'll see you in a second. With a mixture of passion and bold energy, Mexican-American artist Victor Hugo Zayas presents his expressionistic paintings of figures, landscapes, and seascapes and linear abstract sculptures at Lagoon Art Museum in Miobra. Zayas, who lives and works in Los Angeles, unveils his new sculpture series made from more than two tons of destroyed guns. He has created the work as a symbol of peace in conjunction with the Los Angeles Police Department's gun buyback program, which aims to take illegal firearms off the streets of LA. What do you think about that? Uh, well, I haven't seen it, so <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's amazing, you know. Uh, it, that, that was a, a very interesting project, you know, working with the LAPD because it's an unusual thing. It's not normally my sculpture is about astronomy. Yeah. So this was an, a very unusual thing to do, but I took the opportunity to do so. So how did it change you in the end? Um, it well, had to have. <laughs> no, you know. I think, yeah, I, I think that um, it's the first time that I actually realized that we are global. You know, a lot of times we don't, we don't, we don't see it. I mean, I, we, we, we hear and we're busy and we're doing things, but uh, I remember <coughs> the, the day after the, the, uh, the show, uh, after the opening, I, I got a call from a, from a writer that did a story on, on the gun sculptures, and then he sent me a link and the, it was the next day, and there was 200 articles all over the world, including BBC, CB, I mean, everywhere. And I, you realize that how important how it important is, it is and, and how important it is that art could be very powerful. And it could say a lot about humanity, about all of us. And I think uh, uh, it was the first time that I actually woke up to that. And uh, so... Uh, 
that's one of the things I learned. I mean, you know, it, it was um, from taking something that is uh, so negative and so violent and so uh, harsh, and to to try to um, transform uh, something like that into perhaps something you can't really transform that, but the message is a positive one, and it's something that it, it changed a lot of uh, people and a lot of kids and. The show was viewed um, more than any other show since, since 1954 or something like that, but it was it had to do with kids, and it was the connection they had with the transformative power of art that made all the difference. So to be a part of that, um, it's, it was great. You know? So what do you guys think of that? Because you're a different generation, and this is where you guys are. Yeah, I'm done. You know? He's, these guys are the ones that are coming up. No, you know? that's <laughs> the thing. I mean, <laughs> that you know, that's why one, one reason I love to have you know these, especially mm -hmm. urban artists, on here is because this is this is the new generation. These these guys have to deal with the mess that we've made, <laughs> basically, in a lot of ways. Um, you know, environmental issues, um, racial issues, y you know, and what's so great is is the art, the real raw art that I'm seeing today from these people is about, it's more about peace and togetherness and integrating and how are we going to do this together kind of, um, kind of thing. So how do you, because you guys probably haven't seen this, um, what he did with these guns before. Oh, it's the first time. And Johnny, how long have you been in L.A.? Oh, it's been three years now. Okay. I lived here prior when I was younger, but moved back after college. So that was actually after, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. At maybe. Well, maybe about the same time that you you you, you did the gun thing. Uh, that was uh, <coughs> four years ago. Because that was okay. 2012. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So how does that impact you? Because you knew LA before. Yeah. When you were here. I think that's powerful. That piece <laughs> right there, that, that <laughs> show that you did with the guns. That's. It's epic. You're getting you're getting not only the community involved because this affects us all. Gun violence affects everybody. Yeah. And then you're getting you're also work, you're working with the LAPD, right? Yeah. The <coughs> you know, yeah. You know, th the reason why I did this uh, the gun sculpture was because I had a friend that was uh, just an amazing guy. Uh, he was the largest distributor of uh, uh, dates in California in Coachella Valley, and. Um, you know, here you go, women again. He fell in love with a woman. Those damn women. But <laughs> Stay away from them. They're nothing but trouble. No, they're no, not. Stay away from them. They're good, fun. Just <laughs> have them for a little bit. Yeah, this guy, th this kind of trouble is not good. Uh, he, he fell in love with this girl. And uh, six months later, the, the, uh, the husband called him and says, I heard you've been seeing my wife. And he didn't know. And my, my friend is one of the, the least violent guys you can possibly think. Just a gentle guy came over and killed him and it had a, a, a great effect on me and um, by the time they offered me to do this the reason why I agreed to do it was because of that and I and what I was trying to do is I was trying to create portraits that kind of symbolize uh, something positive and from something negative and it know? turned into certain yeah and beyond uh, your control images yeah and it's um and it's good um, you know, so I, I think y y you're right. We do have a responsibility, and I think we have to react to everything that goes on. And I think that the uh, more aware you are of that, a, a lot of times I think art um, has become more corporate, nothing Yes. Less. Yeah, it's and not. It doesn't from say the anything. Heart. Exactly. Uh, and, and, and it's it matches the couch well. Well, <laughs> you know, the heart, the heart is one thing, but, but um, I think you have to grasp um, really the knowledge that you're gaining and then you have to transform it into something that says something through you you know through to the whether it's music whether exactly. it's a uh, contemporary painting whether, but it has to um, I, I don't ha think that it has to say uh, uh, you know I, I'm not a political artist I'm not a environmentalist I mean, I'm, I'm really, I'm just an You're artist. You're a human. You're a human I'm artist. A hu well, I'm a human artist, but, but I, I am someone that's looking for the beauty in things. Yeah. Well. And I think whether it's my Alley River paintings, um, you know, the, also the, the Los Angeles River paintings, I've been painting for 30 years. 
Yeah. It was it was it was not a political statement. The 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 actually politics of it catch up with me. We're going to get to that closer yeah. to the the fourth segment actually because I have some footage on that right now. Let's let's look at um, Johnny Terajosu's video and this is such a a great segue because he is such a humanitarian sort of artist. He's bringing <laughs> us all together. Okay, so check it out. Okay, so a reminder, some of you saw Johnny's work already, but not in that format, but as a, as a brief description, actually kind of a long description, but all of the words need to be there. Johnny blends freestyle, intricate detailing of archaic design from ancient cultures, including the Mayans, Sumerians, Egyptians, with Arabic art, Asian-inspired calligraphy, and tribal cultures from across the globe. So all of that little tiny detail, yeah. there's... Um, I just want to say I'm thoroughly impressed with that presentation. Well, that's, <laughs> that's your art. <laughs> it's not me. It's your art. I mean, that's my job is to, you know, bring it all together. But that you did all that. And it's sure. all about uniting cultures, uniting people together. There's lots of symbolism in there. Mm -hmm. That's all related. It's a, like it's a oneness issue here. We're talking about. Yeah, it's like I, f I figured like us artists, we have a platform, and especially with social media. We Instagram, definitely have. Thank you. It's, we it's, do have a platform. Like you're saying, it is global. It's very global. And the one thing that we do in our studio can reach millions of people all across the globe. Not you just know. Here. And just on that note, I don't want to interrupt, yeah. but I want to remind the viewers. Well, which is kind of funny. But this is a global station. I mean, everybody sees this. Everybody can get who everybody who has internet can go and watch this show. So we have viewers from all around the world right now watching this show. So yes, it all goes right in hand in hand with social media. Yeah. You know, can I say something? <clears throat> I don't. I don't think so. No. <laughs> well, no. It's interesting because you know, uh, these guys. Uh, everybody that's um, below thirty, you know, you guys are so savvy. Uh, with uh, technology. I'm completely retarded when it comes <laughs> to technology and I hardly ever use it and I, I hate using it yeah. and uh, I, I'm not, you know, I didn't really grew up with it until I first grew up and then I, I, I saw technology but and I'm trying to use it and I, I'm trying to be part of that whole thing but you know I have a difficult time putting one Instagram a week. So, you But know, if you're doing it, I'm, I'm, I'm just it. starting and, uh, but I'm completely new at it and I'm, I'm really uh, 
You know what? I don't know if an international renowned BBC uh, TED mm-hmm. Talk yeah, guy yeah. such as you really needs so much well, social you, media. You know, I, Google him, guys, and well, you'll see what I mean. I, There's I, a thousand videos. But I, but I tell you something, though. I, I, I truly believe that your job as an artist is in the studio. Yeah. And you have to show up. And I think there is a, you have to be careful because there is a lot of people that look really good on Instagram. They look yeah, for really, sure. really mm-hmm. But when you look at their work, it lacks a lot of things. It's you know? both, and it's difficult. And, I mean, I, I don't love social media, but I'll tell you this, and this is what I tell all of my creative people, you have to do it. It doesn't matter if you like it or not. You ha- it's part of it now. Because, yeah, you can be in your studio do it, making amazing, beautiful things, but if nobody sees it, did it really happen? It's got to be a balance between <laughs> exactly. studio and yeah. getting it's out It's terrible. There. Well, uh, now technology, I mean, before te- – artists were lost they nobody knew they were there and they they did amazing things and and then eventually they die and then somebody else sometimes and sometimes somebody would find them yeah okay we're gonna we're gonna let's show um johnny's wall tara josu wall since we're still on the johnny topic um okay talk a little bit about this just a a little bit south central yeah (laughs) this was for a small south central and this was um, right after you were here last, no. This was when a I, little you were before, here. yeah. This yeah. was going on yeah, during yeah. that time. And this mural, I don't know if you can see the detail down there, but it's hope, it's unity, it's family, just really great values. There's love, there's unity up there. And I really believe that, you know, there are differences between people, but we can really see the, the similarities and work towards the similarities. So we're all more cohesive. Well, look at what a beautiful piece of art it made combining everybody together yeah. <laughs> and that's a that, there you go for an ancient culture you know yeah. Mayan cultures it's beautiful yes okay and there's um you dabble in some fashion too let's show the four fashion can we show the there we go there's some there's some johnny fashion <laughs> yeah so you can sport it too it's a cool idea i like it and that one um well, I lost it now. And then also, you did you did a board, um, which is super uh, yeah, great. Skateboard deck. There you go. That's beautiful. Also wanted to mention like the reason like a lot of people are like oh man you're selling out or you're doing clothing and da da da. No 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 no. It's not just for profit. Mm, it's no. It's the intent behind what I want to do with the model I want to have is a good like a good portion of each piece sold is going to multiple different causes where we show transparency where the money's going how it's being used you know that's what i want to do with my but clothing. you know what it's not just that there's a message behind what you're doing and yep. aside from everything else um creatives have the ability to express themselves and to make a difference in their voice yeah. with their voice yeah. i mean it was done in the past that's actually initially that's how news got through it was through art and now it, it's kind of got dumbed down from there, <laughs> but we got to bring that back for sure. Okay, how are we on time? Should we take a break now? We should take a break now. We're going to take a quick break. We'll see you in a minute. Pangea Seed Seawall, what the artists are doing to bring awareness to the planet and to also beautify everything. Using trash to make the art, and then picking up this trash, repurposing it into something better, and also making a statement with it. You want better, better, I mean, in any kind of art. You always want your art to be better. So if somebody's painting over your stuff, go bigger, go better. Your hair looks so amazing right now. Oh. Yeah, totally got sex here right now. <laughs> <laughs> the dimples, yeah. Arabic art, Asian inspired calligraphy, and tribal cultures from across the globe to create a vision of human unity, aka humanity. Representing the whole globe and everyone. This call to action with certain kinds of murals that will emphasize more of a negative aspect of our culture. And there's another way to do it to really give people hope and maybe pump them to action. You know, as, as we were saying, how social media is affecting everything. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this, I think lately artists, today, even though they are rock stars, it's all about the image of the artist just as much as the art itself. The cryptic, too, it's like he started just getting into more, uh, slowly people start accepting him. I think. 
you've inspired me. And it's, uh, speaking about his image, it makes it more mysterious, which you kind of want to get to know more about his work. Yeah. Like his I look like I just shot a film in like the valley. I just got bukkakeed. I was just like sweet <laughs> pace, just like falling over me. I'm just like, what the hell did I fucking get myself into? <laughs> Hey, welcome back to the Hollywood Post Show. Okay, on Thursday, March 17th, Brackets with the amazing Naomi Robin will be opening for Charming Liars at the Troubadour. Yay! Yay, Naomi, the Troubadour. 9081 Santa Monica Boulevard, WeHo. Uh, doors open at 7 p.m. Brackets are on at 8.30 p.m. Hailing from Los Angeles, Brackets use the perfect combination of grit and charm to bring angst to a music <laughs> scene that could use more of it. I like that word. <laughs> Blending powerful Joplin-esque vocals with sweet melodies, their songs are kinetic in nature and lyrically pure. Snag your tickets before it sells out. Google. I did this because the link was... So Google Troubadour L.A. Charming Liars. Sorry, Charming Liars, but I'm a total Brackets fan. You guys are cool, too. But. Okay, Saturday, March 19th at 11 a.m. This is interesting. Everybody needs to go to this, maybe. The Belmont Tunnel and Animal Alley Tour, hosted by Los Angeles Obscura Society. Join Cartwheel Art Tours and Feel Agent Aaron Johnson as they explore the vibrant murals of Animal Alley. I've not seen this yet. And the history of street art and graffiti in Echo Park. Three months ago, international and local artists gathered in an alley behind the Bob Barker Marionette Theater. Sounds like trouble to me. <laughs> That's all I can say. No, they went there to paint colorful animals of all shapes and sizes. Trek through Animal Alley with curator and alley project founder Jason Ostra. Ostro? Ostro. Sorry. And meet several of the artists, learn more about the history of the project, and discover how it's transformed the community in Echo Park. And next stop, the legendary Belmont Tunnel. Recognized by the LA Times as the 1980s epicenter of West Coast graffiti, built in the 1920s, the Belmont Tunnel, a.k.a. Hollywood Subway, transported people between downtown and Westlake for 30 years until officially shutting down in 1955. Today, it's been incorporated into a private park for residents of the Belmont Station Apartments. Historian and author of Graffiti LA, Steve Grody, will recount the complex history of the tunnel, as well as its transformation from Hollywood Subway to Graffiti Mecca. This two-mile walking tour ends at the Belmont Art Space. Photography is encouraged. So hashtag, you got this, Victor? Mm, yeah. Hashtag. <laughs> Yeah. Hashtag Atlas Obscura, Cartwheel Art Tours, and Animal Alley. Advanced tickets only at atlasobscuraobscura.com. A portion of the proceeds go to Cartwheel Art and the artists. So that's pretty exciting, interesting stuff in LA going on. So check that all out. Okay, we're going to get to Kalen. Yeah. Because Kalen's been so patient. He hasn't been shouting or screaming or kicking me under the table. Well, only a couple times he kicked me, but <clears throat> that's okay. Okay, so what are you all about, Mr. Kalen Blake? Hmm. Um, to a degree, it's, it's I'm still... Talking to the mic or I'm going to oh, have to slap you upside me. the face. <laughs> um, I guess in short... Um, Having spent maybe the past 12 to 14 years in like Santa Barbara County, spending a lot of time at the Channel Islands surfing, mm. uh, spending a lot of time doing yoga and just kind of like living a very chill, very chill, very uh, nature oriented existence up there. And, you know, dipping into SF and, and L.A. and always being super inspired by the culture uh, in both of those cities. Um, in the past two years, I've kind of been uh, doing laps around the U.S., New York, L.A., SF, and just kind of like feeling out um, urban culture in general uh, after having left Santa Barbara. And I think it, it gives me an interesting lens. Yeah, it seems like you're kind of blending two worlds together. Yeah. Um, yeah, essentially, I mean, 
all that outdoor activity has informed my work heavily. Um, so now it's just kind of like there's a bit of a culture clash personally. Um, oh, personally. But, but, but it's also it's also um, it's a clash, but it's also like it's a it's kind of a gosh, what's the word? Just a, a good coming together of, of themes, I think, and at least in, in yeah. OK, let's take a look at his work and see what he's babbling on about. <laughs> this. I'm so just kidding. I'm so sorry. I'm the babbler, <laughs> actually. OK, just so uh, I'm sure everybody knows this, but broken English is my first language. <laughs> and I mess that up all the time. OK, so we're going to go to Kaylin's video. And you will you can check out where he's coming from, and you'll get it. Okay, so what's interesting about what you're doing is you're blending urban and nature, as you said, but you're also merging people and everything, fish, yeah. animals, like every everything is one. And it's so cool. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, it's just that. like it's all it's all coming from the same place. And I think we need to think more in those terms. We're all from the same place. Yeah, I noticed you were talking about, I mean, in general, we were talking about humanity. Um, but, like, I see it a little bit differently, I think. You see it broader. You yeah, see the bigger picture. I, I try to not think of humanity because I, I, I think I have a fundamental understanding of the fact that, like, the complexity and beauty and intricacy of humanity does not exist without the biodiversity that kind of brought us to this point evolutionarily. So... I, I kind of see no subject matter as like out of my realm, which is a little bit dangerous, obviously. Because mm, I, I don't see any danger <laughs> in it. I think you're pulling it off. I think there's, there's some freedom and limitation um, sometimes. Uh, so I find myself, but I find myself cruising like from theme to theme. But yeah, generally it, it looks like you're breaking down all those barriers, <laughs> which yeah. artists, great artists tend to do. I think, like. I think humanity is just, it's, it's a lot more related to everything else than we sometimes think. I think we think of ourselves as separate, perhaps better, and uh, yeah. I think that's actually very dangerous and self-destructive at times. And I try and illustrate kind of the non-duality, um, the non-dual nature of everything, because atoms and molecules are constantly cycling through my breath and um, through my body. Uh, into every other living organism on the planet over not that long of a time, like within right. my lifetime, many times over. So it's like, it's an illusion of separateness that is basically the most damaging thing to the planet and no, ourselves definitely. at this point. So I think that 
yeah, just incorporating humanity with uh, nature. I, I want to I want to hear Victor's <coughs> point of view on this subject because you <coughs> see, this is you know the newer generation is talking like this. These are the creatives. These are the innovators. These are the ones that are going to save us, <laughs> basically. Mm -hmm. And it's it's interesting because they're to me the 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 newer artist on the scene with this kind of an outlook is um boy they're so much wiser than than so many of us in the past because it's it's almost like a mm, i don't it's a it's a brand new world um you guys it's your world so you're you're in it you, it's your responsibility we're to all waking up to it you know or an I expression, guess. an expression of the same world. Like exactly. Yeah. So, we, Victor, what do you ours. think about this? <laughs> um, it's us. <laughs> yeah, not much. <laughs> um, You're well, already there. You know, I, I can tell you that uh, eventually <coughs> you will be judged on what you do, not what you say. Yes. Like, uh, so, technically speaking, I think um, you have to ask yourself as an artist, um, uh, how am I going to do this? How am I going to paint it? How am I going to make it structure visually? But technically, you know, when you, when you look at the great museums of the world, if you walk through a museum and a painting pulls you, it pulls you, there's a reason for that. The image, but it, it's really how, how was it made? Exactly. And I think a lot of young guys should ask that question all the time because a lot of times, uh, it takes a long time to get your technique exactly. and your technical uh, ability to actually make something really beautiful. And but you have to start somewhere. No, no, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> we, we all do, but I'm, I'm just reflecting on, on it's taken me a long time, yes. a really a long time. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I don't know how many shows I have. I, 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 I think over <coughs> 60. Is that over yeah, 60? Yeah, it's, it's more like, it's a little more than that. But so it's probably but up to 70, 80 by the last time I stalked you. It's ridiculous. Well, it's, it's a lot, but um, so I, I always figure, you know, it, it's just taking me a long time. It doesn't have to yeah. take you a long time. Uh, it's, it's taking me a long time. I have enjoyed the process very much so far. I, I don't think I'm there by any means. I think that I've been fortunate enough to survive with my work for the last 30 years. But at the same time, it's still a challenge. And it, it, gets, it gets more difficult and instead of less difficult. I mean, for me, it's been a, you know, you, you would think that if you paint a, a thousand paintings, you would think that, you know, the, the next painting would be easier. But it's almost the opposite. You know, when I first got out of art school, yeah. I, I really thought I, saw, I, I knew something. I was pretty, probably pretty arrogant and pretty just, I, I really thought I, 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 it was great work. And when I look at back at that, you know, I, I, I just hope, I, mean, I was just glad that it didn't publish. <laughs> 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 but I, I think as I, as I get older, um, I realize that the that is so much more challenging. And art has so many different levels. And you go through different periods. And you have to enjoy every period and you have to learn from every You know what? Um guys, I'm gonna I'm gonna kinda switch the cut sheet around. Let's go to um uh, uh, Victor's landscapes video next. That would be a great segue. Oh you have one another one of those <laughs> <laughs> Urban Landscapes. Quickly mastering this compositional strategy of painting bridges and buildings as tactile masses, Zayas evolved his work into an investigation of texture and atmosphere. Now, instead of articulating space through the structure of predominating objects, he conveys a sense of space and of place through use of chiaroscuro, or tonal nuance, especially visible in the various nighttime scenes. These dark views are some of the most voluptuous depictions of a city night since Whistler's Nocturnes painted a century earlier. And like Whistler's canvases, Zayas's night paintings depend on elision and capitalize on a virtuosic handling of paint that coaxes vivid evocations of night from a relatively few strokes of the brush and a restrained palette. These nocturnal paintings 
as well as the daytime pictures Zayas painted at this time, include views not only of urban districts, but of rural or seemingly rural areas. A great number of the fields and trees rendered it an ever more fluid and vigorous brush are actually located within the boundaries of the city of Los Angeles. In Elysian Park, just above downtown, for instance, or in parks and other verdant clusters located in the barrio of East Los Angeles. You know, you know, where did you get this stuff? <laughs> you know, I don't know where these guys get it either. <laughs> you know, I don't know what the hell they're talking about. I just it's wanna, crazy. I just want, I know they brought up L.A. too, <laughs> no, but no. I just wanted to show your work. And, yeah, you know, but, okay, but you know what I love about it is it's it's because it's what you're talking about. It's there's so much. You don't paint, but you paint so much by it's the, your brush goes with well, I don't know how to say it. Go well, ahead. Well, I know I I I wish I I would have known that you wanted some of this. I would have given you some better. Well, you know what happens is that through the years, unfortunately, you know somebody walks into your studio and they take some photographs now, uh, and then they put this and then painting. They, put words they don't in your look mouth? good. No, they t oh, they, they the take these photographs that they look mediocre because maybe the 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 scene was fine, but the painting itself looked bad. Then they focus on that, and it's out of focus. It doesn't represent <laughs> me well. And then you get this guy talking about romance things. novel somewhere, <laughs> and you just go. <laughs> it has nothing to do with what I'm doing now. Some yeah. of those paintings that you saw was what? painted 25 years uh, ago. Yeah. So not things that I want to publish. And, and all of a sudden, they're okay, there. strike that whole video. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, uh, the paintings that I'm That's doing... That's what people see of you, though. I mean, well, all of that is, is no, accessible. No, I know. I know it's accessible. But, you know, right now, I just came off a very important exhibition for me. Yes, the river. The Ali ri River. Can we show those photos of the river? Actually, there's only a couple of, um, of you in the river. There you are in the river. We can talk about the river. <laughs> well... Because that's... I, I, I mean, I, I could have sent you some really nice, beautiful photographs of the paintings. I know. I know. I actually have a whole video of the river, but we're running out of time. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> but everybody can check it out. Look up the <laughs> river because they are amazing paintings. But that was that was the end of last year. Um, was it October? October 2015? The river was four months ago. Was that October? <laughs> I just finished. Uh, it was a four four month exhibition. Oh, it was a four month. Okay, okay, I see what you're saying. But it started in October. Uh, October seventeenth. Okay, so I, I don't have time to show the yeah. video of the river, which I loved. Though it was in Spanish, but it was um, no, I loved that. Oh know, my gosh, so much! But tell us about the river and your passion for. Well, <coughs> you know the Allen River is uh, is my na my neighborhood. It's just basically, I it's got I get out of my studio and it's right there. And it's been there for 30 years, so it sort of affected me, uh, and I enjoyed. Uh, it was no political statement or anything like that. I just wanted to walk along the river because I can hear the water, and it was just uh, peaceful. And as the years went by, I started painting it. And the first time I painted the Alley River was in 1996, um, not 1986 tells you how old I am. <laughs> I, I just graduated from art school. and uh, Were you two? Huh? Were you two years old? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Wow. See, I the video is from when he was two years old. But, you know, uh, uh, what happened is because I've been painting it for so long, I had an uh, amazing platform with the, uh, the Museum of Latin American Art. Yes. And I, I was able to have 54 uh, paintings for the exhibition. And, uh, and it, it's, you know, you can, there's... Uh, a lot of things written on it. You know, I don't know if you read the Huffington Post review. Yeah, they're beautiful. And, uh, and they, they cover all of that. So yes. that's what I'm doing now. And, uh, and it's, I'm excited to be here. You it know, sounds, like, it sounds like we need to have you back on. We need to talk about the river more. It's a yeah. whole topic in itself, well, by the way. It's a whole yeah. episode talking about the river. I was ready for that, but, you know, you just threw me in a loop. <laughs> okay, well, no, no, just I'm going I'm I'm to throw, <laughs> throw you back out, and I'm going to throw you back in again, and we're going to talk more about the river, yeah. but we're, we're out of time. So we need to kind of wrap it up. Okay, so where can we find you, Kaylin? Um, just my website. Blake. What is com. it? We don't know what it is. KaylinBlake.com and KaylinBlake on Instagram and Facebook. And all of that yeah. stuff, Terry. Uh, Terry Terry. Terry. Com, <laughs> sometimes I say, sometimes I say, 
Tara, Tara Johnny So Sue. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so anyway, go ahead. Or Tara, Tara Husu, but um, tarajosu.com and tarajosu Instagram as well. Okay. Victor Hugo Sayas.com. C A Y A S. Z A Y A S. Yes. That's okay, right. anybody who's been on the show is going to be on the show. Anything about the show, www.wetpuzzlepiece.com. You can find all my social media junk on that website. So check it out. Next week, who do we have next week? We have Scott Hess, we have George Dubin, and we have Alexi Steele. It's going to be another exciting show. So check it out next week. See you soon. Mwah. You are watching T-Radio V, radio and TV.